A while back, we made a video detailing Thrawn's experience within the Imperial Academy and the bullying he dealt with due to him being non-human. Since then, a comic book adaption of the novel the story took place in has since come out, giving us direct visuals to use for the story rather than relying on unrelated artwork of Thrawn as we did in the first video. We also expanded upon the original video and added in additional details. Before we get further into the video, we want to thank our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. There are literally thousands of mobile games out there in the wild, but Raid Shadow Legends truly stands out with its immense variety of content, including nearly 500 champions to collect and upgrade, countless artifacts to find, and billions of different teams to test new strategies with. The gameplay is a turn-based RPG set in a fantasy setting that gives you a plethora of methods to advance through stages as you battle against your enemies. Each champion in this game is surprisingly detailed, not only in appearance, but also in abilities. For example, Fury Stoker is a support with a passive named Forest Kin, which heals an ally with the lowest health, and Grumbler, a defense champion who can shield allies from attacks. You never have to worry about not finding a champion to your liking, as Raid Shadow Legends is always updating their game with new content. Here is some concept art for upcoming champions. Our favorite is the woman with the golden sword, which glows almost like a lightsaber from Star Wars. Support the channel by checking out Raid Shadow Legends with our links below in the description. New players will get an exclusive welcome pack that contains 100,000 silver, one energy refill, three ancient shards, and a free champion, the Adjudicator. Your free rewards will be waiting for you in your in-game inbox. Be sure to claim them quickly, as they will only be there for 30 days. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Prior to achieving the rank of Grand Admiral, Thrawn was required to attend an Imperial Academy upon Palpatine's orders so that the Chiss could familiarize himself with the technical terms used within the military and get an understanding of the commonly used tactics of the Navy. Thrawn attended the prestigious Royal Imperial Academy on Coruscant alongside with human cadet Eli Vanto, his translator who had been assigned to him ever since the Chiss was first taken in by the Empire. Eli Vanto was an Imperial cadet from Wild Space who was nearly finished with his own training. He sought to only become a supply officer so he could earn a modest living for himself and his family. But then Thrawn came along, and Eli happened to know a Wild Space language that the Chiss was fluid in. So the young man was assigned as his translator, which completely rerouted his desired career path. Nonetheless, both were sent to the Academy for a few months by Emperor Palpatine himself, who hoped to use Thrawn's military prowess for his own navy, as well as using the Chiss to better understand the mysteries of the Unknown Regions. Although Eli Vanto was sent along with Thrawn to the Academy to continue his translation duties for the Outsider, Thrawn was already largely fluent in Galactic Basic, and only used his reluctant friend to help him with common slang. When they arrived, both stood out among the human-filled academy, Thrawn for his obvious alien features, and Eli Vanto for being born outside of the inner core of the galaxy, which was identifiable by his accent. Two things that were looked down upon the core raised humans from mainly wealthy families. Due to the former separatists being made up of mostly non-human aliens, there was widespread prejudice against them as a consequence. Even humans beyond the mid-rim worlds, likely due to their limited involvement in the Confederacy of Independent Systems during the Clone Wars, were viewed down upon by the Core World's elite. When Thrawn and Eli Vanto met with the Academy's president, Commandant Dean Lark, they were met with disdain right off the bat. At first, Dean Lark thought the two of them being admitted to the Academy was some kind of twisted joke being played by the Emperor. He then began to question Eli's intelligence, implying that those from Wild Space were of lower IQ, and he then casually gave a few racial slurs toward Thrawn due to his alien origin. They were then dismissed to go to their studies, but not before Thrawn was handed a lieutenant plaque. Dean Lark stated that since Thrawn had already had military experience from his days in the Chiss defense fleet, that he would be graduating at a higher rank than his peers. Although this gift was masked in some semblance of respect, Thrawn quickly deduced that there was more to it than just skipping ahead of his peers, that the real reason he was handed the lieutenant plaque was to make him an even bigger target within the academy, as fellow cadets may look at him with envy or as a washed up lieutenant who had to redo his training. As a result, he decided not to wear it in public during the start of his studies. Within the first month of his stay at the academy, 
Thrawn experienced at least three incidences of bullying. Most of these were pretty minor, with him only being called casual racial slurs or being slightly shoved in the halls. None of these incidents seemed to bother Thrawn though, who refused to report any of the harassment he had undergone to the higher-ups, despite being asked to do so by Eli. Thrawn's human friend had his own share of bullying as well, with him being targeted not only for hanging out with an alien, but also for being from wild space, with many of his peers regarding his inclusion to the prestigious Coruscant Academy as a stain on its reputation. Although Thrawn was more than within his rights to report upon his cruel treatment from fellow cadets, he ultimately refused to. He understood that reporting these minor incidences to the higher-ups would likely result in nothing, as it ultimately came down to his word against his harassers. Instead, he wanted to appear like he was an open target for bullying, so that his bullies would one day overstep their harassment and do something that could not be excusable. Eventually, this happened just as he had predicted. One day, he and Eli were invited to play cards with a few of the other cadets, some of whom were their common harassers. The cadets at the card game set it up to peer into Thrawn's mind and to possibly humiliate him, likely out of jealousy as the Chiss was at the top of his class in many respects. They proposed a game scenario for him to overcome, one of which was nearly impossible in a real game of cards. Although Thrawn at first entertained the cadets with their wild hypotheticals, he ultimately put them in their place by revealing the lieutenant plaque he had received from the commandant. This revelation was to show the cadets that he held real power over them as a higher ranked officer, to the point of even dismissing an academy's instructor who had interrupted their so-called card game after assuming the students were up to no good. It was also used as a lesson. He showed them to never underestimate your enemy, even if you believe them to be beneath you, to always know what tricks your opponent may have up their sleeve and to always have a foolproof plan when you head into battle. A lesson Eli Vanto took note of. Shortly after humiliating the fellow cadets at the card game, Thrawn and Eli were ambushed by three hooded individuals as they were making their way back to the barracks. Their main target was Thrawn, whom they ganged up on after Eli was shoved away. Although Eli was thrown aside, he came to aid his friend, helping distract the attackers long enough for Thrawn to fight them off before they retreated after a group of people witnessed what was happening. As a result, Thrawn only sustained minor external injuries. Later, it was discovered the three hooded attackers were linked to the group of cadets that Thrawn had humiliated at the card game. On top of the witnesses that saw the attack happen, he also had comlink evidence linking the group to the attack. His long-term plan of baiting his bullies to overstep their harassment had worked. Thrawn now had the evidence to give to the higher-ups of the academy to punish these cadets accordingly. But then another problem arose. Although Commandant Dean Lark acknowledged the incident to have occurred, he was reluctant to dish out any punishment, as the cadet who orchestrated the entire attack, named Spence Orbar, was the son of the Imperial Senator of Coruscant, which meant that he would be under fire from Coruscant's elite if he were to publicly punish the Senator's son. Seeing how it was very unlikely to convince Dean Lark to punish the cadet, Thrawn suggested an alternative solution, punish Spence Orbar indirectly by taking away his friends. The three attackers were some of Spence's closest friends, so Thrawn suggested that perhaps it would be best to send the three of them away without giving any reason as to why, so Spence loses contact with his close friends and then worries about what had happened to them, wondering if they were expelled from the academy or even given prison sentences. But the three attackers would not be punished directly either. Instead, they would be transferred to Sky Strike Academy as Thrawn noted that they would make excellent pilots based on how they attacked him but they too would not be notified of this transfer until they got there. So they would be in fear for a few days until they arrived to their new school. These indirect punishments were not conceived by Thrawn as a means of revenge on his bullies, but rather because he genuinely believed that by doing this it would benefit the Empire the most. For one, the three cadets being sent to Sky Strike Academy did indeed show talent for being pilots, and because they were sent to an academy that excelled at the program, they'd likely choose that career path becoming great future additions to the Imperial Starfighter Corps. And when it came to the Coruscant Senator's son, Spence Orbar, his separation from his close friends would possibly make him get his act together and perhaps make him become a respectable leader in the future. Thrawn acknowledged the talent that all four of these cadets possessed, and he believed it'd be a waste for them to get expelled from the Academy for their bad behavior, either for their harassments toward him, or for whatever reasons they may have done in the future had they remained together. So perhaps by mildly punishing them and forcing them to change their career paths would indeed be the best and most efficient resolution for the Empire as a whole, for that is all that Thrawn cared for at the time. 
the success of the Empire and not his own personal troubles. Two months after the incident, Thrawn and Eli graduated from the Academy. Thrawn became a lieutenant and was assigned to an Imperial cruiser, with Eli being assigned as his aide, despite his protests of wishing to still become a supply officer. One of the bullies that was sent to Skystrike Academy ended up piloting for one of Thrawn's future ships, becoming an underling to the very man he bullied during his youth. Though Thrawn did not treat him any worse than the other pilots, not letting the past hinder his duty to the Empire. 